<laughs> <laughs> so here we are, the three blondes here at the Wired Fest. Tell me, did you feel anything? I mean, you can feel it, but you don't get, it doesn't hurt. So you can feel that somebody's hitting you. It's not complete magic, but it does, you just don't feel any pain. Yeah, I mean, what is that like? I mean, this is this? Is this? Yeah. It's what it? looks like almost orange Play-Doh. It really does change its molecular structure under pressure. Now look at how squishy this is. Isn't that, I mean, it just is very soft and pliable. Now you girls, you have a little suit made out of the same material, yes? I don't fine. And she's fine, absolutely yeah. freaking fine. <laughs> now Richard, Richard, you're the inventor. Come on, hop in here. Tell me about this molecule. I mean, this is an intelligent molecule. It is, yeah. It, it basically knows how quickly you're trying to move it. And it doesn't like being moved. So then it just goes, it just locks together, yeah. It's very stubborn. And you came up with this. How did you do that? Well, I, I, as a previous life, I was a, um, a scientist. Yes. And then I turned... I was a rocket scientist, too. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. I, I didn't do a lot of rockets. Actually, I did one rocket, but that's another story. But, uh, <laughs> but I, um, I then uh, got fed up with science, and I um, got, got involved in art. I went to the Royal College of Art. And then I left and started an innovation consultancy and just got involved with lots of different technologies that were underutilized and materials like this not exactly the same as this but you can get the same effect in corn flour and water really yeah but you can't use it so well, you can use it to thicken your gravy <laughs> <laughs> that's usually what i do but yeah. some guy was telling me that i could mix it together and then i could if i walked over it it wouldn't crack if you run over it you run over you it walk slowly you'd sink into it and get covered in you know corn flour and water yes okay that's an experiment we need to do but i want to know okay so you were playing around in the laboratory with some gooey stuff and all of a sudden you went oh look it hardens well, no, I, I, I guess I knew about the materials and I was working on a number of different developments playing with some amazing materials and at some point you, you, you get frustrated that you can't use it because it's still a liquid. Right. So I tried, you know, you, I first of all tried to put it into things and that really wasn't very effective. In other words, encapsulate it. Right. And then you can put it onto things but it doesn't stay there. Yeah. So I had to change it. So I just added the uh, elastomeric bond to it as opposed to putting it into something which is holding its own shape. So here's Richard and he's going to actually demonstrate this with his knees. So this is a concrete floor. We're in a convention center. It is, I verify right now before everyone, this is concrete. So Richard, you're going to do what now? I'm just going to drop on my knees so I can... And that, that did not hurt. But it's, it's in, I just, we just built some trousers with it in. It's just in here. It's, just, it's, it's the same thickness as you've seen over there. It's really thin right. and it's soft to fill it. Well, of course, it's the squishy orange stuff. So on impact, all of a sudden, the molecule changes its structure. Yeah, it's basically, it locks together, and it really helps to spread that impact force, and it just absorbs a lot of the energy of the impact. Now, you still feel it. It's not like suddenly you've, you've defied the laws of physics, but the shock absorption you get is phenomenal. Fantastic. And so the uses would be sports? Underfoot, very interesting for running, for sports, where you can lower the profile of the shoe and still get that same phenomenal shock absorption. Um, in gloves, in clothing, where you want the dexterity or the freedom of movement, in, in helmets, in soft beanies, which are not like a helmet, but a lot better than a woolly hat. Well, yeah, I was thinking like when I ride my bicycle on Venice Beach, you know, I might want to have a cute hat versus a helmet. Correct, and yeah. if I fell off, the cute hat wouldn't be helping me. But if I had your orange stuff in it then yeah I mean there's there's so many applications and so you, you have all those helmets the challenge with a lot of the applications is you have existing standards which are written around existing materials so sometimes you know you need a strap and you need this and you need that so sometimes you think oh it'd be nice to make a product which satisfies the standard but you can't because you then spoil the product based around what it was if that makes sense yes. um, so yeah there's so many applications a lot of potential military applications industrial footwear for metatarsal protection mm -hmm. and anywhere where you want that softness but you also want the protection so what's next on the horizon for you well I think I mean in terms of markets then we we started off in snow sort of ski um, motorcycle and we're just going to move into some of the North American sports which are obviously a lot of contact sports and then past that the industrial and military markets and then past that potentially automotive but by then you know yeah we just saw one of our best football players get hurt this past week and if he had had this in his helmet it might have been a different story Absolutely, yeah and that's that's the, that's the future so once again, here we are with Richard, and we're talking about technology and how it's going to make our lives better. Thank you, Richard. You're you. really amazing. Thank you.